And welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal from Northampton Cricket Ground. There's a huge crowd of people. They've gathered here already. You know what it's all about. It's about getting the very best price for their antiques and valuables. I can sit them down with one of our regular dealers. They're going to try and tempt them with a cash offer today. No. See, what have we got on the table so far? 220. Yeah. Two, he's good at counting, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I will be on hand at all times to help and advise. If I think it's worth a gamble, I'm going to say, go on, take a chance. Go to auction. You might get a little bit more money there. 150. We're ready to go. The crowds are here. They want to do business. Our dealers want to do business. We're all looking for the real deal. First up, and Henry's table looks like a garage forecourt. Can Donna drive off with the deal she wants? Well, what a lovely collection you've got here. What's the history? Um, I was given them about five years ago. I right. used to work in Rushton Town Bowls Club, yep. and I was given them by the caretaker. Because I have two stepchildren. OK. One's nearly 17, the other's nearly 14, and they don't play with them. Do you know anything about them, about their age? Not a clue. Not a clue, OK. <laughs> well, what we've got here, we've got a very nice selection of dinky and corgi toys dating from the 1950s through to the 1980s. Now, these ones at the back here, the 1980s ones, in absolutely mint condition, but really they're not as popular and not as sought after as something like the corgi toys here that we've got, or these dinkies. There's a huge collecting market for corgi toys, and these ones, these Chipperfield Circus toys, are absolutely wonderful. What I love about them, especially this one, the crane here, is the condition. The condition is marvellous. And with the collecting circles, that's what they want. The condition is absolutely paramount. The fact that we've got some boxes here as well really helps. Sadly, with the boxes, most of them are a little bit worn, a little bit battered, a few tears and breakages to them. I think that if we had more here that was in better condition, I think you'd be looking at a good amount of money. But we've really got a few specifics that, that are worth the money. We've got these Corgi toys, we've got the BBC roving vehicles, a couple of dinkies there that are in not bad condition. This is the important part of the day. OK, let's go 20. 40, 60 pounds. How does that seem? No. No? No. I think I'll go another 20, 80, 100 pounds. How does 100 seem? They're worth a bit more than that. Mm. 120, 140. How's 140 seem? Just before you say anything, Don, I've come in here to let you know what our independent valuers think and what I think. Now, they're saying 100 to 150 pounds. I look round at this collection and think, well, it's quite a nice collection. They're in reasonable condition. Some are boxed. I think you need well over 150. Otherwise, I'm saying to you, girl, boom, let's get some steam up and let's get off to the auction. Well, OK, so we're at 140. OK, I will exceed 150 for you, but it's not going to be by much. 160. 170. That, I think, is my final offer. How does that seem to you? Are you sure it's your final offer? Not tempt you with some more? OK, let's play the game. My very, very, very final offer. I'll put another five on the table for you. But if it's any more than that, I think I'm out. Well, Henry, I think we've got a deal. Fantastic. Pleasure doing business with you, Donna. OK, 
Caroline Corey. Hi. And you've brought along a lovely, lovely little thing. And it's so intriguing. Do you mind me asking where you got it? Uh, I got it in um, a car boot. You got this in a car boot? I did. What, yesterday, last week? About 35 years ago. 35 years ago? You've had it for 35 years? I have. And have you worn it? No. So for 35 years, where has it been? It's been sitting in a drawer. It's been in a drawer for 35 years. Yes. It's sweet. Why didn't you wear it? Um, not quite my, my thing. OK. Well, let's, shall we have a look at it? Mm. So it all folds up and closes like that. That's right. And it looks like an upside-down shamrock to me. Yes, yes. So it's really, so it's a locket. You hang it on a chain round your neck. When you open it, and let me open it very carefully, You've got space for one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you can open it again. And you've got another six, because these are double-sided. Yes, that's right. So you could have your entire family <laughs> hanging around your neck. Isn't that charming? It's beautifully engraved. And there is a registration. There's a diamond there, oh. which will tell you what year it was made. And I, looking at it, would think it's something between 1860 and 1875, 1880, that kind of period, just by the engraving and the style of it. And I think it's lovely. I'm going to put it back down for the moment. If you sell it, have you something to do with the money? Have you got a plan? Uh, yes, the grandchildren are going to uh, <laughs> benefit from it, so. Let's put some money on the table. 20. 30. She's shaking her head very firmly. There's 40 on the table. If it was gold, it'd be substantially more. But it's not. It's just rolled gold. So really, what I'm putting the money down for is because it's charming. Yeah. And you've got three grandchildren. I have. If I was to add five, 45 on the table, that divides <laughs> evenly. <laughs> There's 15 each there. <laughs> My maths isn't great, but I can get that far. It's an odd number, though. <laughs> it's... If I change this 45 for a crisp £50 note, you'd say yes. Yes. We'd have a deal. OK, have let's do that. Let's gather up all the shrapnel and a nice red 50. We have a deal. Thank you. Next stop, a silver egg cup and spoon. Crack open a good deal, Alison. Tell me, was this given to you as a christening present? Yes, it was. And how long ago was that, might I ask? Um, 1959. 1959. Oh, yeah. good vintage. <laughs> Same year as my husband. You're from good stock. <laughs> well, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and it's come from Hong Kong, so what's the story behind that then? There um, must be one. Well, my dad was in the army and he helped build Kai Tak Airport in Hong Kong. Oh, right. And um, I was actually born in Hong Kong. How interesting. I've, have you ever flown... Well, you must have flown into the airport. Um, it's quite scary because the runway goes through the sea, so you actually think you're going to hit the sea, but, of course, you don't, fortunately. That's and, right, uh, yeah. It's a nice piece. It's got a reasonable weight, and um, it's nice that it's boxed. Very yes. nice that it's boxed. And so, did you ever use it? No. So you never sat there and had your soldiers with your bald egg then? Not that I'm aware, no. <laughs> oh dear. It's just it's, sat, well I can see that it's just it, been in a drawer. It looks it as well, it looks immaculate, doesn't it? Yes. Well, it's something that's quite saleable because it will be obviously a christening gift. Right, I should have to put some of my hard earned cash on the table for it. 20? I really was looking for a little bit more for I'm it. I'm always dying when people say that. I always want to say, how much more? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> Very good. You never declare how much more. You let our dealer make the running. But let me tell you this. Now, the independent valuers, they're both of the same opinion and the auctioneer, 40 to 50 quid. It's ridiculous, really. It's shiny silver. It's solid silver. 
Recently, silver has not done that well, especially Chinese silver. Now, with this certain momentum from mainland China, all things Chinese, 19th century things which were of no real consequence, are starting to make that bit more. And I predict in a few years' time, perhaps that will get up to 70 or 80 or 90 pounds. But at the moment, I'm not so sure I'd turn down 40 quid. Thank you. Now, that said, there is nothing to stop you taking that to auction and at that auction have two people who actually need that sort of gift and finding you get more. Would you consider you... another five pounds? No. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. That is, I think, a good offer for what it is. I think I would like to take it to auction. You sure? Yes. Well, I hope you get a lot more than my £40. I hope you have a lovely day. I know that you will because David will be with you. And yes. thanks for coming, Chris. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Well, Christine's decided to chance it at auction. Will that choice be a yoke around her neck, I wonder? Why have you decided to part with it now? It's sitting in the drawer, and it's been sitting in the drawer for ages. Well, so. normally Chinese silver, there's all kinds of decorative items, cups, spoons, little rickshaws, all kinds of items. They don't normally do that well, but in recent years, a lot more interest is coming from mainland China for Chinese items, not only porcelain, but other things as well. Now, we are in an English country sale room here, so it may not translate, I don't know. There is a reserve of £45 on it. It's got to be worth that. Let's see if it brings it under the gavel. It's coming up now. Silver red cup and spoon this time then. Where are we going to be that crowd? £50? 50 40 Well, 30 and start, mate. Where are you bids for this then? 20 bid, 20 got 20 bid, 20 got 20 bid only, 20 bid only, 20 bid. 2, 22, where are we there? 25, 28, 30, 2, 5, 8, 40, 40 pound, 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 Coming up, have we met Stuart's mini me? Well, I've got, to, I've got to say, a nice pair of sideburns. Yeah. I've got to say that, haven't I? <laughs> Can you spot the difference? Where have you been? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Across the dealer's I den, like Peter's to brought a little friend to meet Stuart. We can see it's a gnome, can't we? Yeah. Tell me what you know about it, please. I bought it from um, a dealer who'd done a house clearance about 30 years ago. Right. Somebody, uh, I sent a letter to the Gnome Museum and they wrote back and said it's a German biscuit um, gnome. Did they? Yeah. Right. Um, and that's as far as I know about it. I think they're wrong on the material yeah. that it's made yeah. of. Originally it had a rake. Yes. Um, uh, a hay rake. Yeah, they usually know, fitted up with it, a, yeah. a, all the gnomes are yeah. usually fitted up with a gardening tool of some yeah. sort. There's some damage on it. Yeah. Uh, his leg's been off at some time or other, half a leg. Yeah. And the back of his slipper there. Oh, right. Um, and, and because of that damage there, I think it's more likely to be some form of composition like plaster or something. Oh, oh, yeah. It certainly feels heavy enough. Yeah. Much too heavy for bees, in my opinion. Right. Difficult thing to date. Did they date it? No. No. They didn't. Really treacly sort of paintwork and quite realistic. His face is quite nice. <laughs> well, I've got, to, I've got to say, a nice pair of sideburns. Yeah. I've got to say that, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, you bought it here to sell it. It's a pure guessing game for me, but let's see if I can uh, part you from it, shall I? 50 quid. Shaking his head, not quite. Well, it's a tricky one, this, isn't it? Um, normally they're terracotta. This one is plaster of Paris, so it's more mass-produced. 
And because of that, the estimate is 30 to 70. The 50 pounds in front of you is not a bad offer. No. Will you be able to do better in an auction? I'm not so sure. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say 50 pounds, it's fair. Right. Not but that is ten. my bid, no, no. not even no. another five, I'm afraid. OK, deal. It's off to auction or a deal? Deal. Do we have a deal? Yes, deal. OK, thank you, Peter, thank you very much. Well, I'm never a gnome museum. Well, you know what they say, there's no place like gnome. I'm Henry. Pleased to meet you, Henry. I'm John. John, good to see you. Um, obviously, we've got two tabletop lighters. Yep. What do you know about them? Um, I know this is called the Dunhill Giant, yep. um, which I think is um, one of the larger lighters they did. And I think they're quite collectible and you don't see a lot of them around. No, you're right, you don't see many of them around, yeah. but nevertheless they are around. Yeah. I mean, both of these um, date to mid-20th century, mm. OK, so you're looking somewhere kind of 19... 30s yeah. through the 1950s, and in actual fact, both of them are in really quite good condition. Um, I'm, I'm particularly impressed with this one because normally you find that the plating with these, being handled so much and cleaned so much, actually wears off really quite badly. Yeah. Um, and over the years I've had several that have almost been completely stripped yeah. of all their plating. The other one here is what they call um, a, a touch-top table lighter, and we've got covered in leather around the around the main body here and chromium plated on the top yeah not quite as desirable i think mm. you know as this as yeah. the giant yeah um, but still nevertheless they're really quite nice how long have you had these i think i've had them about three or four years okay i collect a lot of different things mostly metalware okay um and just decided to buy dunhill because of the name so let's have a look and see what we can do Let's start off 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 pounds. How does that sound? Um, it's quite a nice offer, but I don't think it's enough, even though I know the prices have dropped. I still think there's probably room for more. Well, let's put another 20 down and let's go 140, 160, 165. How does 165 grab you? Are we getting there? It's very close. You're, you're probably, you're very, probably close. very close to, to clinching it, really. Um, could you go any more on it? I'll tell you what I'll do. Let's put those two in, £180, but that's my final That's your, final your very last yeah. offer. I can't raise right. it any higher than that, I'm afraid. OK. I would be happy with £180. That's really what I was looking for. OK, so we have a deal? Yes. OK, fantastic. Yeah. Now, John, tell me, okay. how much did they really cost you? I paid for this one, the uh, the Giant, I paid £125. Yeah. And for this one, I got quite a good price at 25. So, 25? Yeah, Fantastic. so that's 150 for the two. I think you're actually going to make more money out of it than I ever will. Well, we'll find out how Henry gets on later in the show. Now it's time to find out what Cora's up to on her table. Hi, Sarah, I'm Cory. Hi, oh, pleased to meet you. And you've brought along the watch today. I have, yes. In the original box. Yes. Rotary. Yeah. And how did you come by it? Um, my d my mum bought it for my dad um, back in 1976. So I'm selling it on my mum's behalf today. <laughs> and, and why is she getting rid of it? She was just going through some bits. She's just recently moved to Northampton. So we we were going to come down here today. And we, she thought we'll give it a go and see. Well, it's interesting. I mean, it's not quite old enough for me to be very interested in it, but I think these, these, if you like, forerunners of digital are becoming collectible. I think that they are interesting to, okay. to a new generation, a whole yeah. new generation. You don't remember them. <laughs> it's a nice condition, nicely presented. You've got the original box, and we're not too sure how, how well it works. I mean, I, I'm not too sure about how they work. I think 
you pressed that little button there right. and it should light up. That's right, yes. But I should imagine over the years the battery's gone totally flat. It has, yeah. yeah. So it should be fairly easy to put in a new battery oh, and get it working. Yeah. So let's take it that it's in reasonably good condition. Hmm. Let's put some money on the table and see how okay. we go. 20, 40. I'm going to put 60 on the table. I've been told by my mum what to accept. Do you mind me asking how much she wants for it? She was looking for about 120, 130. I think she's probably right. I think you've every chance of making that kind of money at auction. But I don't think I'm going to come up with the offer. Okay. Beyond my experience, I'm afraid. OK. Well, I wish you the very best Thank of luck. Thank you very much. And I hope you do really well at auction. Coming up, two sharp cookies keep Stuart in check. If you put one more 20 down, I might oh, take it. Oh. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Northamptonshire County Cricket Club. The queue stretches all the way inside, and hoping to be first in line for a diamond deal is Alison. Tarina. Very unusual name. And this ring, this is your ring? It is, yes. And what's the history of the ring? So I can see it's a nice old ring. Yes, it belonged to my mum, and um, when she died, it came to me. OK, well, it's a lovely five-stone eternity ring. Although, originally, when this was made, they wouldn't have considered it to be an eternity ring. An eternity ring was something that came much later, in the Edwardian period. So it's set with some lovely old European-cut diamonds, and it's 18 carat. And it was made in the year of 1886, so that's well over 100 years. And really, it doesn't look like it's been worn a lot. No, I remember my mum never used to wear it either. I think so it, it just sat just, in a box? Yeah, yes. Which is Shame. sad, Very, yeah, yeah, really sad. But on the other hand, uh, that's why it's in such good condition. Yes. And why are you selling it today? Um, I'm learning to drive and um, I would like to pass my test and maybe get a, a little run around because my children keep saying to me, you need to start learning to drive. OK, well, I'm going to get my money out because I'll try and buy the ring. It's a nice quality piece, very saleable. So we'll cut to the chase there. 100, 200, 300. 400. I'm not going to mess you around. I'm going to come with my final price. 500. I come strong on it because it's a saleable ring. It's difficult when it's sentimental. It as well is. To you, isn't I've it? got to wait. Got yeah. to wait up. You wouldn't stretch another 50. I have put on the table the top end of what I would expect to have to pay for this ring if I went to auction myself. Yes, I'll take that. Before you came here today, what sort of figure did you have in mind? I did have 600 in mind. Although I know we've agreed on 500, and it's a bit unorthodox, I really like you, and I really want you to get your driving done, and I think it's wonderful that you're doing it. So if I put 550 down... That's lovely. Terrific. Thank you. Well done, darling. Thank you very much. Rina's driven off with a very generous offer from Alison. The lad is? Dylan. Dylan. Will I'm Rhiannon sure and I'm young Dylan need nice L plates for their deal? When I first saw this, I thought it's either a typewriter or it's upside down. <laughs> but I was completely wrong on both cases because I'll open it up. Isn't that lovely? We'll put this just here and we'll see the best of it. Tell me about it. What do you know about it? Um, we think it was from the 1890s time. You're about um, right, yeah. And my great 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 uncle won it in um, a race, which the ticket this is race. there. Yeah, that race. And he gave it to my grandmother for um, the first year of her wedding anniversary. Um, but it just sits at home, and my grand just said, if you sell it, then you can split the money between your grandchildren. So. We brought it here today. And how many grandchildren are there you've got to split it between? Six of us. Oh, that doesn't There's fare well quite... for me, does it? No. Well, I've got to tell you, it's lovely. 
It really is. I love it. I can't really fault it. I've actually inspected it closely. The case is a little bit shabby on the edges, but it's the right case and yeah. it can be tidied up easy enough. A couple of disappointing features about it. It's not silver. It's not. It's silver plated, isn't yeah. it? The good point is it's complete. Yeah. It's original. It's old. It's not damaged. I've actually looked at every piece and mm -hmm. all the china is perfect. You know, lovely. Copeland china. Just, just see that. Shall I have a go? Go on then. <laughs> Let's split this six ways. So if I start out with six pounds, that'd be a good start, I think. No. Okay, let's start with 60 pounds then, okay? Right. That's only three of us, so far. That's enough for three of you, is it? I was thinking mm. ten or each. No. <laughs> so we'll give you 20 quid each then, which is 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120. 20 pounds is still not much, is it? No. No. Well, I've walked in here because there's been, I don't know, there's mixed feelings on this. The independent values of the auctioneer, they look at this and they say, is it 150 to 250? That's the kind of estimation. The Duke is saying it's worth 200 quid of anyone's money and don't let them kid you that it's not because you could not replace that for 200 quid. I'm going to put 200 on the table. Because I hadn't actually stopped when David okay. came in. You realise that, but that's OK. So we got 140, 160, 180, 200. There's a little bit more, 220 pounds. Smile, please. <laughs> <laughs> Decisions. Um, if you put one more 20 down, I might oh, take it. Oh. What have we got on the table so far? 100, 200? 220. Yeah. Two, he's good at counting, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I saw you doing that every he's time. Watching. I put 20 down. 220. Oh, dear me. You want another one of these? Is it a deer at another one of these? Yeah. 240 pounds. Do we have a deal? Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Rihanna. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Dylan. <laughs>
There's 200, and I'm very near the end of my guess as to what. I guess, that's actually the word, my guess. Yeah. 250. Yeah, sorry. No, sorry. There's 300 there. You can say how you feel, and then I'll tell you all how I feel about it. It's a generous offer, but I'm afraid not. OK. I know that you bought this some years ago in Japan, and you bought it as a retail item. Have we declared yet what you paid for it? No, it's about £1,600. £1,600, and, and quite rightly so. Look at the work that's gone into that, quite amazing. I think it goes without saying, with this kind of money, you're going to say no. Yeah. Now, are you happy to go to the auction? Yeah, I'd be happy. OK. Now, six to eight hundred pounds is the estimation. What a cracking lot. Are we going to sell this at auction? We hope so. Coming up, will the samurai strike it rich in the sale room? And can Henry charm the seller with a big offer? £950. How does that seem, Jen? No, that was very decisive. <laughs> Maybe not. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. I've got Adam here. Now, Adam, you brought along an unusual item, something we've never seen on Dickinson's Real Deal before. It was modern, but beautiful quality, a Japanese samurai suit. Now, Adam, if you sell today, what are you going to do with the money? Is it for travelling around? Or what are you going to do? Well, we're trying to open a monkey sanctuary, and we're oh, using right. every money we can raise to try and succeed with, like, cages, aviaries, and uh, on the land as well. OK. Well, a very nice thing to do. You're trying to uh, start this monkey sanctuary. You're trying to raise money for it. Now, you sat down with Corrie Jeffrey, one of our dealers, on the dealer's day. Now, Corrie's normally a very strong... Uh, a bidding dealer, but I don't think it was really her cup of tea, and so she bid £300. What did you make to that? It was a reasonable offer for that time. A bit low, though. Yeah. It's here in the sale room, estimation £600 to £800, there's a reserve of £600. It's worth it. It could be a bargain for somebody. Let's find out what they are prepared to pay. Can I get uh, £600, £700? Three bid, not three hundred pound, but it's 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 three hundred pound. Who else wants to bid here? Well, it's cheap as chips. That's no money. Like you're all looking. Nobody is bidding here at three hundred pound. If not, I'll move away this time at three hundred. Three hundred pounds. We got up to in the room. That was exactly the same offer that Corrie Jeffries made. But of course. Corrie Jeffries made an offer of 300 without any deduction, so I'm going to award the real deal to Corrie Jeffries, our dealer. Nevertheless, it is not enough. That samurai suit is worth more than that. So you're taking it home, yeah. on to another auction, or perhaps advertise it on the website. Yeah, we'll try and advertise it. Whichever way, Adam is determined to sell it. It's the final deal of the day. And back in the dealer's den, Jan's also hoping for a big payout for the very charming Henry. What a charm bracelet. It is, isn't it? It is. What's the history of it? Um, my father gave it to me about 40 years ago. OK. Um, and he said, look after it. It might be worth a few bob one day. OK. And um, I used to wear it many years ago, but haven't worn it for a long, long time. Any, any particular reason why you um, haven't worn it? don't go out that often anymore, not like we used to when we were younger. Um, and it just sits in the bottom of a wardrobe in a, in a box. OK, Jan, well, let's have a closer look at it. We've got a lot of charms on here, and there's some really nice charms. I particularly like the, the jockey on the horse here, which mm. I think is in a high-carat gold, as opposed to a lot of the others being in nine-carat gold. Mm. It's nicely modelled, and I like the fact we've got a little bit of enamelling here on the jockey shirt, mm. which is just really sweet. And then we move on to this really fun little piece, which is a little fruit machine. Mm. Now, what I love about the fruit machine is that when you move the arm, the actual rolls on the inside okay. do turn, yes. which I think is exquisite. I mean, to make that mm. is just... Yeah. It's just an engineering feat, in my opinion. <laughs> and we move round the bracelet very, very slowly here, and we get to this wonderful miniature grandfather clock there, yes. which has even got the dial, and you can still tell the time on it, which yeah. is just fantastic. 40 years ago, 
what you've got on the table here would have been worth a fraction of what it's worth now. Right. And we have got a variety of carrots here of gold. We've got 22 carat on the little sovereign. Yep. We've got a lot of nine and what we generally call high carat, which is 14 or 15 carat gold. Yes. So it adds up to quite a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So let's see what we can do. Okay, we're going to go 50 pounds. 100. Don't worry, I will go a little bit more than that. <laughs> 150. 200. 250. 300. We're keeping going. 350. 400. 450. 500. 550. 600. You want me to keep going? Yeah, yeah. Okay. 650. 700. We're going to have to start a new line. Yeah. Maybe another two. 750. <laughs> 800. 850. 900. 950 pounds. How does that seem, Jan? No? Yeah. That was very decisive. Yeah, no way. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Are we far away? Um, yeah. OK. Well, let's see what we can do then. We're at 950. Mm -hmm. Let's break the £1,000 mark, shall we? So 1,000 there. OK. 1,050. 1,100. How does 1,100 seem? Mm, a bit more than that. A bit more yeah. or a lot more? Uh, quite a bit more. Quite a bit yeah. more. Mm. OK. A lot of people would just put it on the gold scales and give you the weight of the gold. Mm -hmm. But obviously, in order to do that, they'd have to break it all up. Yeah. I think there are one or two charms in here that are worth more than the scrap value or their weight in gold. Yeah. I think I'm going to go 11.50. 11.70. Eleven ninety, twelve hundred. Just before you make your mind up here, let me tell you exactly what the independent valuers say. They're saying twelve to fifteen hundred. Our dealer is saying twelve hundred pounds. That is the lower estimate. We've now got to say, come on, <laughs> give us a bit more money. Try not to be too greedy, mm -hmm. but this is where to settle the deal. With bearing in mind what David has said, yeah. we'll go another 20, another 40, and another 50. That's 1,250, any more than that, and I think you should put it into auction. If that's your final offer, I'll take it. That is my final offer. Okay. Thank you very much Thank indeed. You, Delightful Thank bracelet, you. I absolutely love it. Now, did any of the look from those charms fall on our dealers today? Corrie scored £120 for the gold locket. Stuart's new friend is staying with him, but the tea set went onto the gavel for the same price as he bought it. Alison found a buyer for the diamond ring who paid £725. Henry drove the cars to 220 I think you're actually going to make more money out of it than I ever will. And so far, Henry's right, as he's only sold the big lighter for £150. But his best profit comes from the charm bracelet. He didn't scrap it, but sold it as one piece for £1,600. Charmed indeed. We've had a great day here at Northamptonshire Cricket Club. There's been lots of action, lots of buying, lots of selling. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. See you.